you're tuned in to the ministries of Elder Jerry Payne. We will encourage you, motivate, and empower you through the preach word. Stay tuned and be blessed. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. This is Elder Payne. I want to say thank you for tuning in for another message. Uh, wherever you're listening from this morning, if you're listening from your home or if you're at your job or even if you're driving down the street and you're listening, I want to say I appreciate you for taking the time out your day. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Crawfordville, Fort Lauderdale, Quincy, Florida, Bamis, Georgia, Valdosta, Thomasville, Hollywood, Florida, Miami, Florida. Uh, Delray Beach, Florida, uh, Boca Raton. I just want to call out a couple of cities because I really do appreciate, especially the people that have to go online that's not local that listen to these messages. Uh, Elder Henderson, uh, Reverend Jimmy English, uh, Minister George Wallace, Minister Carter, uh, Brother Stan from uh, HH Greg, thank you for taking the time out. Elder Malone, uh, also uh, Sister Mary Williams, uh, Mother uh, Mary Rosia, uh, Mother Walker, some of my family members at Greater Mount Zion Primitive Baptist Church. Also our faithful listener, Sister Elizabeth Jones. I, Jones, I want to say thank you for tuning in this morning. Miss Marlin, I want to say thank you for tuning in. All the other preachers and teachers, evangelists, also want to say uh, thank you for tuning in. Just to take the time out your day. Uh, Mother Sheila Payne, uh, Jeremiah Payne, thank you for taking that time out. That's the nine-year-old preacher. Preached down in Fort Lauderdale, so we made it back from Fort Lauderdale. The next uh, message will be in Oak Grove Primitive Baptist Church in Beeston, Georgia. That'll be the fourth Sunday at 3.30 for y'all that want to follow that ministry. And God has really been blessing us. I want to thank the people that came out to the Bible study uh, not this past Tuesday, but the previous Tuesday at the Best Western Hotel. So I thank those people that came out to support that also. And I want to thank each and every person and their respectful place. So if I don't never call out your name or don't never call out your city, you just let me know. I really do appreciate the time to let you know that I appreciate you. Today's message, my brothers and sisters, is going to come from Philippians chapter 4. And I'll be starting at... Verse 4. That's the book of Philippians chapter 4. I'll be starting at verse 4. And wherever you're at, uh, if you don't mind, let's pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, that kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, Father, but deliver us from all evil. Deliver us from all sin, transgressions. Father God, whatever it is that you see in us that's not right, Father, we ask you for your forgiveness. Father, we repent in your son Jesus' name. Help us to be doers of the word of God as well as hearers. And Father God, at this appointed time, I ask you to let me decrease and let your Holy Spirit increase. Help your people, Father, that they be doers of the word of God. And I pray this prayer of faith according to thy holy will. If there's anyone sick this morning, we pray for healing in the name of Jesus. If you're burdened down this morning, we ask in the name of Jesus that he lift up your burdens. And whatever it is that you need from God and through his son, Jesus Christ, we're asking and we're praying for it. If it's deliverance, no matter what you need, just believe and trust in God and it will come to pass. Amen. Philippians chapter 4, starting at verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men that the Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing and everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known unto God, and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whosoever things or whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good, report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which have been learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and in the God of peace shall be with you. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at least Excuse me, now at the last your care has flourished again. Wherefore you were careful, but lacked the opportunity. Verse 11, note that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state that I am, therewith to be content. 
Uh, in verse number 11, I just want to use those words as a topic to be content. You know, the Lord put this in my spirit that, you know, there are a lot of people that are that are going through different situations this morning and they have different trials and different tribulations and they got different concerns and, and different things that they asking God to do. But I just want to let you know this morning that no matter what it is that you're going through, you got to be like Paul and to be content. And Paul is a great example of a person being content. Uh, with some of the things that Paul had went through, and, you know, Paul, he, he was locked up in prison and Paul was shipwrecked. And, you know, Paul was beaten many times for, for the sake of the gospel that God has given him. And even though Paul helped a lot of churches, there was not a lot of churches helping Paul. And that's what made the church in Philippians uh that's why Paul acknowledged them. You know, a lot of times you do your very best to, to help people and to, to uh, pray for people and also to, to guide people. But a lot of times you don't get the response back to know, like, uh, who is really on God's side versus who's not. So Paul just focused on the Philippian church. And, and what Paul said is that he's content in all situations, whether he got support from the other churches or not, or whether he got support from all the individuals individuals or not, but Paul learned to be content in any situation that he's in. Now, I know right now that there are a lot of brothers and sisters that are going through financial circumstances, and, and there might be people that don't have jobs, people that can't feed their families, but I just want to let you know that you got to be content with the Lord, but you see, the Lord, he said that he'll never leave you, and he'll never forsake you. He said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I rather glory in my infirmities that, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then Paul said, then I am strong. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 through 10. And I want to let you know this morning that no matter what it is that you're going through, that through Jesus Christ, you're strong. You know, God gave us the power. We have we have power to be Christians and preachers and teachers. We, we work by the power of God. But what God is saying this morning is when the power that he has given us, when we run out, when we get in distress, when we get burdened down, that's when God steps in. And that's when he used that power that, that, that's, that's above the power that he's given us to make everything all right because his grace is sufficient to be content my brothers and sisters there there are people that are sick this morning they're still been waiting on their healing but if you put your trust in God just know that God will answer you just know that God will heal you you got to have a made up mind that you are content no matter what your situation is Paul said when when he was hungry he was content when he was full he was content when he had money he was content when he was poor, he had content. When he was in prison, he was content. When he was out of prison, he was content. In all situations, my brothers and sisters, be content. Right now, as I speak, there are people that are going through marital problems right now. But see, you can't put your trust in man or put your trust in a woman. You got to put your trust in God. And when you are content with God and the devil knows no matter what he does to you, you're going to stay content with God. He ain't going to mess with you the same way. You see, the devil, he works off weakness. He works off fear. And we must not be afraid because he said that he'll never forsake us and he said that he'll never leave us. So I want to give you strength this morning that you got to be content in the Lord. He said, nay, in all things, we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. Romans 8 and 37. And I like Paul. Paul said, who shall separate us from the love of God? Not height nor depth, not angels, nor principalities. In other words, this morning, there's nothing that you could go through that could separate you from the love of God. You got to keep him first. You got to be content no matter what situation that you're in. You know, we living in a world now that they are uh, especially television and especially these different stars that call themselves Christian on national television and they curse and, and they live promiscuous lives, my brothers and sisters. But see, that's not the way of God. See, we must listen to the way
way that God wants us to listen. That's why he says, seek him and he may be found. You know, a lot of people, you tell people right from wrong, all depending on what you tell them, they have itching ears. You see, God, he never changed his word. He made a, he made a statement in Isaiah. He said, heaven and earth will all pass away before his word should fail. My brothers and sisters, a lot of things that's, that's going on in society, going on in the schools and stuff, it's not of God, my brothers and sisters. The people need to start standing up and stop being afraid, but be content in the Lord. If the Lord said it, the Lord meant it. Especially us preachers, my brothers and sisters. If we're preachers, we got to we got to stop giving in to evil people. We got to stop giving in to the majority when the majority is wrong. If you haven't noticed that Paul, a lot of times Paul had to stand up all by himself. There was twelve disciples, but only three in the inner circle. My brothers and sisters, Peter he denied the Lord when things got real tough. And see, God don't want us to deny us to deny Him. We got to stand up for God. We are God's witnesses. We got to confess God. We got to let people know that God is still real. You got to be content in the Lord. So no matter what your situation is, the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in Him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoice with the song will I praise him. Song number 28, 7. In other words, my brothers and sisters, you got to praise God no matter what. I learned a long time ago, no matter what trouble come my way, I still keep my eyes on Jesus. I still focus because I'm content in Jesus. You know, there's nothing that you could do on your own but get in a lot of trouble. You know, every time we, we try to do things in the flesh, you know, I got this phrase, the flesh always causes a mess. But when you walk by the flesh, my brothers and sisters, there's always going to be some trouble. But if you listen at what God is saying, if you take his instructions, if you take his yoke, if you follow him daily, if you crucify daily, if you take up your cross daily and be content in the Lord, everything will be all right. If you be obedient to the Lord, nobody can touch you if you keep his commandments. I know Christian people are going to have trials and tribulations, but the devil can't mess with us the same way he messed with the rest of the world. If you keep his commandments, if you love one another, if you love God and keep God first, he will make the devil behave. He will make the evil spirits leave. He will bless your finances. He will make people that are trying to treat you wrong treat you right. You got to be content in the Lord. You got to have a made up mind that for God I live and for God I die. Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. I will uphold thee in thy right hand of righteousness. You see, of God before us, my brothers and sisters, who can be against us? God will help us. God will support us because God loves us. We don't supposed to be living the way that we're living. We don't supposed to be struggling and, and, and going through all of these different trials and tribulations as an evildoer. But when we go through trials and tribulations, we should be like Paul. We should be rejoicing in them. Paul said he counted all gain. Paul said he put all of the things that's behind him and he pressed towards the high calling. He's pressing towards the mark. There are a lot of Christians right now that been going through stuff. You need to put that mess behind you. If you've been church hurt, my brothers and sisters, put that mess behind you. If somebody did you wrong, put that mess behind you. That stuff can stop you from going to heaven. You know, sometimes the people that, that did you wrong, my brothers and sisters, they have a better relationship with God than you do because you're so focused on getting even. You're so focused on them getting their judgment and you're wasting time on earth. And other other words, my brothers and sisters, you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. You don't know if you're going to get up another day. We don't know how close death is, my brothers. That's why I give God the glory every morning I wake up out of my bed. People die at all ages. I'm, I'm content with the Lord. And, and you got to understand that when you're content with the Lord and when you get removed from this earth, that out of all of this stuff that you're going through, that you're going to be there in heaven. You're going to be there with Jesus. You're going to appear in the judgment. Your name should be written in the Lamb's book of life. And that's something to be content about. 
So no matter what your struggle is this morning, no matter what your trial is this morning, I know a lot of Christians in America, I know uh, we have a shortage of jobs, and I know that there are people that are suffering all over America, but my brothers and sisters, look at some of the third world countries when people get killed just for professing that they are born again Christians. Look at the people that are dying just for, just for water, 